I feel as if we're in a time right now when we're so divided, so fractured, that we somehow need to find that again. We need to find that spirit of just sort of getting along and getting good stuff done. The Boys in the Boat is absolutely phenomenal. I feel like this is those type of inspirational movies that I absolutely love. This is the ultimate underdog story. And I find this period of time very fascinating because not only did the, the JV boys, uh, U University of Washington boys face off against the university seniors, but they also faced off against rich fraternity kids and then the Nazis. Um, now, what inspired you to delve into the story of the University of Washington rowing team during the 1936 Olympics? This story literally walked into my house. My neighbor, Judy, came to me uh, as like 14 years ago, and she said, um, would you come down and meet my dad? She'd been reading one of my earlier books to his dad, her dad, and, and he wanted to meet me. So I went down, and I met this elderly gentleman named Joe Rance. And as it turned out, he was in the last couple months of his life. Um, but we sat down and he started talking to me about his family situation growing up during the Great Depression. And he had a really pretty horrific sort of family situation. But then he started talking about how in 1933, he'd come to the University of Washington and gotten on the crew team, mostly because if he was on the crew team, he would, uh, they would give him a part-time job and that would pay his way through school. So he started talking about that and how he came together with this bunch of kids in the, in the mid-1930s, and they be, they became this phenomenal crew, and how they had wound up going ultimately to Berlin to the 1936 Olympics and rowing against, amongst others, a German boat in front of Adolf Hitler. And I was just, I mean, in that first conversation of a couple hours I had with him, I was just blown away by the story. I mean, this was just a beautiful story just on the first telling of it. So like the next day I dove in and uh, started what turned into about a four year project of researching and writing this story. Talking about the research and writing, can you describe the research process involved in uncovering the intricate details and uh, from the historical narratives? The first thing I wanted to do, I, I wanted to connect, there were nine guys in this boat. I wanted to connect with the family members of all of them or as many as I could find. And so through Joe's daughter, I got introduced to different family members. So I spent a lot of time running around, tracking down family members, talking to them. And all the families were very forthcoming, very helpful. They had diaries and letters and photographs and news clippings. So, so that was sort of the baseline research was just getting to know these guys through their families. And then uh, I didn't know anything about rowing and, um, and that's at the center of it. So I went down to the University of Washington Shell House and they put me in a boat and took me out in the water. And I spent a lot of time talking to rowers, learning about the sport, because I, I knew nothing about it at all to start with. And, and then, you know, just sort of basic archival research. I spent countless hours in the library, hunched over microfiche readers, uh, reading newspapers from the 1930s, just sort of absorbing Everything, you know, I'd, I'd look for stories about the crew first, but then I'd spend hours sometimes just reading random newspapers from the 30s to get a sense of what life was like in Seattle and in the country during those years. And so that, that really paid off, I think, because I had to get my head into 19, the mid-1930s. This is a project that George Clooney has been, has been after for a while. How did this eventually end up in his lap? Yeah, I had a long convoluted uh, backstory. I sold it. Actually, Kenneth Branagh called me originally, and uh, and he wanted to, to direct it. And then it went through ups and downs. What the Weinstein Company had it, and uh, so um, yeah, eventually it wound up at MGM. And and George Clooney, uh, I was really excited when Clooney signed on to direct. Um, he actually called me right away, and we had a long very heartfelt conversation about the story and how he wanted to approach it. And um, and so that, that after this long saga of sort of it going up and down and then going nowhere for a long time, it just felt really good when he was excited to do it. I think Caleb's performance as Joe is absolutely incredible. I feel like there, that Joe's seen so much in his life that he has kind of like this quiet emotion about him, but Caleb kind of like displays that amazingly. What did he bring to the role of Joe that wasn't on the page? And what kind of essence did he bring from the from the man that you met? Yeah, you know, I thought he nailed it, too. And and it would be hard to nail because um, yeah. he's, he's got all this internal pain from his childhood. Um, and you have to sh 
show that without a lot of discourse and exposition about it. It just has to be there, basically, in the character. And so I think I read someplace that he'd read the book like several times. So I think he did internalize, you know, the, the back, a lot of the backstory is not in the film. So he had to internalize it and make it part of it, of his character. And um, yeah, I mean, I knew the real Joe Rance and I was very persuaded by, uh, by, by Callum's um, performance. Well, let me ask you this. In what ways uh, did the story of the, about the boys in the boat resonate with you personally? Yeah, well, so, you know, in some ways, I, and I seldom talk about this, but in some ways I wrote it for my own dad. Uh, my dad was born the same year that Joe Rance was born. He never rode, but he grew up uh, having a very hard time. His family was very poor during the Depression. And when I first met Joe as an old man, he reminded me a lot of my dad in terms of sort of his quiet character, this sort of quiet dignity, this humility, this civility that he had. Um, and so in the back of my mind, the whole time I was writing Joe's story, I sort of, I didn't consciously do this, but I think my, my experience with my own father was, was always in my mind to some extent. And, and that, uh, and I think that worked well. It helped me connect with who Joe was and who, and what Joe had gone through uh, during those years. In a lot of inspirational stories like this, uh, especially involving sports, it's usually athletic prowesses, uh, athletic prowess that usually takes the team to the next level, whatever it may be. But in this team in particular, uh, they almost had their backs against the wall because what they were fighting for was their education because a lot of them couldn't pay for it. Can you talk about that motivating factor for the boys in the boat? Yeah, so I mean, and that's sort of why I connected with my father. My father struggled to stay in school during those years. So yeah, I mean, they were rowing, uh, you know, not for glory so much, first at, to begin with at least, but literally to be able to stay in school and get an education. And so that after words they could go out and get some kind of job in the middle of the depression so they had multiple layers of motivation here and very fundamental to that for, for pretty much all of them probably joe most of all because he was really the poorest of them i think um there was just this you know this deep-seated need he really needed to get on that crew and stay on that crew and the coach albrickson was very demanding uh, uh, so it was hard to do um and so, yeah, that's, you know, that that is a really big, important part of the dynamic of the story, I think. I completely agree. And I actually wanted to bring up Coach uh, Ulbrichsen mainly because I love a coach that kind of is like miserable on the sideline or whatever it may be, but he all does it out of passion to be the best. And I feel like I would play for Coach or I would do anything Coach Ulbrichsen asked me to do. Can you talk about Joel's portrayal of Coach Ulbrichsen? Ulbrichsen was this, he was very reticent. He didn't speak a lot. He was kind of dour. They called him the dour Dane. Um, and he was very stern mostly. Uh, and um, so he wasn't a, a fuzzy, warm kind of coach. But he was very good at figuring out a kid's motivation and then mixing and matching the, the kids that were in the boat and finding the ones that really had the heart for it. And this is a story about heart in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, 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 and Albrechtson understood that. And George Pocock also did. Um, and so they, you know, sort of the two of them, he was a boat builder, but also sort of a coach, in fact. The two of them were very good at figuring out which combination of young men was going to make that boat go faster than any other combination. It's kind of an alchemy putting a great crew together. You've got to kind of mix the ingredients and stir them around and, and wet the pot bubble and see what happens and then put new ingredients in. And uh, and that was really what Albrechtson was was brilliant at, I think. He, Joel nailed it. He's absolutely incredible in this role. Uh, last question I have for you is what aspects of the team's journey in the 1936 Olympics do you believe uh, has the most uh, relevance or lessons for today's audience? I think when I stand back from it, this whole story really is kind of a metaphor for what that generation of Americans did. You know, I mean, beginning of the Depression, 1929, starting from about then, uh, all Americans found themselves in the same boat. And they had to get through really dark times and face really hard problems, the Depression and then the war. And so they had to learn to sort of put their differences aside and pull together and just sort of 
broadly as a generation, that's exactly what they did. They, they managed to put their differences aside and actually get stuff done. And I feel as if we're in a time right now when we're so divided, so fractured, that we somehow need to find that again. We need to find that spirit of just sort of getting along and getting good stuff done. And this film makes you feel great about you. About, I felt great going out of it. So look, Daniel, thank you so much for your time. The, the story is incredible. And thank you for sharing it with us. I appreciate it. All right, great. Thank you very much.